Good afternoon, everyone. It's David Schlotthauer here in the Home Weather Office with another detailed tropical weather outlook and discussion for Tuesday, July 25th, 2023. In this update, we have a lot to talk about because we have three areas to watch now in the Atlantic Basin for the potential for tropical formation. Now, if you're new and you really like these detailed updates, please consider subscribing if you're new, hitting the like button, and sharing this video with their family and friends on social media. And I'll also, please leave a comment in the section below this video letting me know on how you like this video. So let's get started and take a look at the latest true color visible satellite imagery provided by Dr. Levi Cowan at tropicaltidbits.com. There will be a link in the description below this video leading to his home page where you could find these images for free. So we're taking a look at three areas to watch right now. The two areas we're probably not going to see anything in the way of significant development, but one of those could become our next name storm potentially. I mean, I'm just throwing that out there, folks. Just because I just said that doesn't mean it's actually going to happen, but there is some concerning signals on the GFS model, which we will look at here in just a little bit. But right now, 95L has a 10% chance of tropical formation in the next seven days. This is probably not going to do much other than bringing the continuation of showers and thunderstorms to the windward and leeward islands, including for the greater Antilles eventually, where you might get some showers and storms. And then our other area up here, area of interest headed towards Georgia and off the coast of Florida, that has a 10% chance of tropical formation in the next seven days. That also looks pretty disorganized. I am not seeing much in the way of formation on that system, but you never know. You just never know with what the tropics may surprise us with. So that's why the NHC has a 10% chance on that system, which is a low chance, which is why I have it circled in yellow. But however, we're going to keep an eye on this area of interest coming off of Africa. The NHC has now finally gave this a 20% chance of tropical formation. And yes, this could get close to the northern windward and leeward islands in the next seven days. And that's why we are a little concerned about this one because the GFS model is pretty bullish on it. Uh, on its chances of formation uh, in the next seven days. So yes, pretty busy in the tropics right now. And guess what? I saw this coming this entire time. Remember, like at the beginning of July, I said, we're going to have a busy period to contend with here in late July into early August. And here it is, late August or late July, and it is busy out there. So we're going to take a look now at the NHC and yep, Three X's, X marks a spot. Again, this is our area to watch. A tropical wave is located south of the Cabo Verde Islands. Some development of this system is possible later this week into the weekend while it moves westward to the west-northwest over the tropical Atlantic. All right, so it is in no hurry to move. That's why they didn't really put a speed on this. But yeah, there it is. X marks a spot. And then our other area down here, like we just looked at, 10% chance of tropical formation. Invest 95L, that is. Still being dubbed, of course. Um, and then we have our other area over here that also has a 10% chance in the next seven days. So, I mean, we have the trio of uh, areas to watch, folks. And, yep, that's why... I'm making these videos now almost pretty much every day at this point. I feel terrible that I haven't made a U.S. weather forecast. It's just that, man, the tropics right now are lighting up with activity. And that's why we are doing these videos. So as far as a GFS model goes, let's take a look at that forecast for you all. Because you guys are all wondering about how, um, how this is going to all evolve, right? That area of interest coming off of Africa. Okay, so let's, let me bring up this pin. So this is our area that we're watching, okay? There is 95L over the Leeward and Windward Islands. Really not much of a signature here. And what you're looking at here is three plots in one image, courtesy of tropicaltidbits.com at making this possible by doing the advanced coding technique to making these images for free. So this is the 850 millibar level, and it's not the uppers, it's not the mid-levels, it's the low levels, that's the 850. 
and we're looking at different plots here so the lines here are geopotential height at the 850 millibar level and then your wind barbs are right here so here's some wind barbs showing you which way the wind is coming from so we can see wind is doing this around the tropics right now with this ridge that is in place and then the colors yellow orange red indicate how much vorticity there is in the atmosphere and what that looks like here initialized from the gfs is there is what is left with dawn really not much with it other than it's an open wave trough right now but what we're going to be looking for is any congealing of vorticity spin in the atmosphere so we're going to go forward all the way into tomorrow afternoon. This is for Wednesday, July the 26th. And again, we have a tropical wave here really disintegrating. I, I'm not giving much impetus on that at all other than maybe showers, maybe a thunderstorm or two. But it's going to be this wave right here coming off of the Cabo Verde Islands off of Africa that really has my attention. It's been on it's. The GFS has been really bullish for a while now. Over the last few days, la in fact, the last four or five days, it's been showing this system really developing, while the euro still doesn't show anything, which we'll look at here in a second. So this look at Thursday, July 27th, and you can see there is that wave really congealing by Saturday, 108 hours out. This is for July the 29th. There it is, folks, the impetus the 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 signature the entity on what the gfs is showing that could be a tropical wave that really comes together that could develop into a tropical depression or a tropical storm so this one folks i'm not trying to hype up i'm not trying to cause fear mongering we have to watch this one it's it's been a while now um too all too long for consistency here that the um, that even the NHC is beginning to talk about it. So we have to talk about it to ourselves. So going forward, this is for day five. This is for um, Sunday afternoon, July the 30th, the second to last day. And yeah, look at this. This is really developing quite nicely. And this is the 12Z GFS model. New data being fed into the global uh, the global computer model. Yeah, I mean, that's a signature there, at least of a tropical depression of some sorts. Here is that deep, or deep layer ridge to the northeast of the system. So this system is going to want to do something like that. And I bet you I just made an accurate prediction. Let's see if I get this very accurately. Okay, so that's where I think it's going to go. And as we go forward, I'm a little off, but nevertheless... Look at how strong that signature is. Let's zoom in on this. Now, that is a very powerful tropical storm, or if not, a hurricane. Now, again, I'm just looking at one model run here, but if we look at the previous runs, it's you can see right there, this is a 06Z run from early, early, early this morning, showing it for Tuesday next week, August the 1st. Let's take a look at other models. You can see, actually, let me do points of origin here on what each model shows, because that's my job, right? So let's go back to the first run. This is the latest run. Let's do this so you all can see consistency where it has been. Okay. The wave, the strongest vorticity there. Let's take a look there. It's kind of in the same spot. I mean, look at this. This is six runs. Not on that run, really. But it's been down here. Let's go back and look at another one. Right over there. I mean, look how close this has been. It's, it's been showing something for a while here. All the dots of origin mean that we have had a system. So we got to watch this. I mean, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight model runs out of the 10 that I showed you. So basically, it's an 8 in 10 chance of this becoming something, either a low-end tropical depression or a high-end hurricane. Again, just trust me on this. You got to watch this. Okay, so let's go forward here. Man, this is strong. By Wednesday, August the 2nd, that's a very big monster. Big monster. And then by August the 3rd, 
August the 4th. Wow, that thing is huge, huge, huge. I'm telling you, folks, if the GFS comes to be correct, this could really be a big problem because we're going to have a lot of surf animating out of this, so a lot of high wave action, some strong winds out of this, potentially. Even so, it doesn't impact anyone directly. Indirect impacts would be a pretty serious concern. All right, I'm going to only go out to about August the 5th here. I shouldn't really go out to 276 hours, but you can see there the impetus of a potential hurricane or tropical system here. And there's a lot of variability. We know that for sure, but it's been showing some pretty intense outcomes here on the GFS. So now let's look at the European model, right? Let's go forward and take a look at that. Nothing to speak of at all. Uh, maybe a weak tropical wave on the Euro model. Big tropical wave. Very broad circulation coming off of Africa. Okay. And then let's go out to... Um, this is for Monday, uh, July the 31st. You can see there it is. So a huge difference among the global computer or the global dynamical models with that tropical wave there to the southeast of that other one. I mean, the Euro really not showing anything at all. Even the Canadian doesn't show anything at all. Let's go back in time there. So my question is, could the GFS be spitting out a fantasy storm? That's what we call them, fantasy hurricanes because, or fantasy land, we should say, because it's the only model that shows this becoming a powerful hurricane. We shall see. Is the GFS right the entire time? Or is the Euro and the Canadian model right the whole time? We don't know yet. Thing hasn't even be dubbed an invest yet. We shall see. But boy, I'm telling you folks, if it becomes what the GFS shows, that, that that's a big problem. Okay, big problem on the way. So now, let's take a look at the upper ocean heat content. I always like showing you this because it gives us an illustration with what the potential could be if that wave off of Africa does want to develop and take the advantage of the upper ocean heat content. And so, uh, the wave is over here and it is expected to move in this general direction, kind of like this. So it's going to be moving through some pretty high upper ocean heat content throughout its entire journey. Even over here, we have a lot of upper ocean heat content. And just a reminder, even low upper ocean heat content, so the kind of the blue colors that you see on your screen, are enough to lead to major hurricanes, even violent hurricanes. All you need is a slight amount of upper ocean heat content, and you need sea surface temperatures at least 80 degrees Fahrenheit or greater, which I'll show you here in a second, or here it is, in fact, leading to big hurricanes. So looking at that upper, or that, uh, the amount of heat in the ocean here, the sea surface temperatures, yeah, definitely warm out there in the Caribbean, in the Gulf of Mexico, running anywhere between about 31 to 32 Celsius. Very warm, I'm telling you. Really concerning me right now. I, do, I don't use that word very lightly. The reason why I'm concerned is, again, if we have a hurricane or anything that moves through this area and it takes full advantage of of a very low wind sheared environment, lots of moisture in the atmosphere, a lot of upper ocean heat content, look out. It could be bad very quickly. We saw it with Irma, we saw it with Maria, we saw it with Harvey, we saw it with Michael, even with Katrina. Those systems developed extremely quickly because they took full advantage of the upper ocean heat content. And so it makes me wonder if we get that wave that mysteriously can, uh, is able to get into the Gulf and turn up or do something like this, or, you know, kind of hug along the coast here with the, uh, the amount of heat that we have could be really, really bad and scary. Okay. Just, just putting it that out there. Okay. I'm not here for the hype. I'm not here for the fear mongering. Science is proving the point here with what I'm with when I mean business on these uh, the amount of heat that we have. So the anomalies self-explanatory. We went through this all too much that you all are probably saying, David, can you stop looking at the 
the uh, the temperature anomalies. So I'm going to go through this pretty quickly, all right? So uh, it's very far above average. Uh, let's just put it that way. Enough to get major to violent hurricanes in the main development region should the atmosphere cooperate just fine, coupled with the very high amounts of upper ocean heat content and sea surface temperatures. This up here... Cannot explain why it's so warm up there, but sea surface temperatures are 10 plus Celsius above the long-term average. That is pretty ironic for this time of the year. And there is what is left with dawn kind of upwelling some cooler water. But wow, the deep tropics here, untapped, uncharted, ready to go. Almost like a ticking time bomb. It's all about the atmosphere, cooperating, coming together, and coupled with these um, high upper ocean heat content values, a lot of warm sea surface temperatures for a very busy, potentially destructive season ahead. Okay, so that is going to do it with this video, folks. If you did enjoy the video, please consider subscribing. You guys are awesome. I love you guys a lot, and I enjoy making these updates for you all because, yeah, we got three areas to watch. The, the trio, we should say. The trio of the three and the three of the concerning, and the three to watch. All right, so if you did like today's update and you want to see more, please subscribe. Um, share this with your family and friends on social media. You can also follow me on Twitter, on Instagram, as well as on Facebook to get more information on this if you would like, because I am going to be on top of this now for the next several days. That's going to do it. Thank you all for watching.